Hey sweet friends and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Barbara and I love to create budget-friendly home decor. If that's something you enjoy, I hope you'll click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be reminded the next time I upload a brand new video. I have some really fun farmhouse fall Dollar Tree DIYs that I can't wait to share with you guys. So let's go ahead and get started on our first project. For project number one, we're going to create a pumpkin topiary. The bottom pumpkin, I am using a Dollar Tree pumpkin that I created a DIY with last year. I'm just going to reuse this by removing the stem and giving this two good coats of Waverly chalk paint in the color celery. Now it did take a third coat over that lettering in the front because it was very dark. I made sure that I painted this entire pumpkin all the way around. And then I will take the Waverly antique wax and just go in spots on the ribs of the pumpkin, not all the way from the top to the bottom. I just wanted to give it a little bit more dimension and make it look a little more realistic. The top pumpkin is a smaller pumpkin that I got out of a bag from Hobby Lobby. They had these on sale. They had like three different sizes in there. And I'm just using one of the smaller ones, but I do know that Dollar Tree sometimes carries the smaller pumpkins. I am just using that same antique wax in between some of those ribs and making sure that I go on the top part of it as well. Then I'm going to take hot glue and jute rope and wrap that stem all the way around to the end. And when I get to the end, I'm just going to tuck that end piece right into the opening and then kind of squeeze it together just to have a more natural look. You could also paint the stem if you like. Then I can just reinsert that back into the white pumpkin. And then we can start assembling our pumpkin topiary. For the base, I'm using this beautiful glass jar from Dollar Tree that has this gorgeous gold rim and this beautiful rope handle. And I'm going to fill that with some Dollar Tree Spanish moss. And I made sure that I tucked it in nice and tight to get it nice and full. And I also wanted a little bit to spill over the edging at the top. Once I have that in place, I can then hot glue the larger pumpkin down and then the smaller pumpkin on top of that. And then I'll go back and trim some of that Spanish moss up to give it a nice clean look. And I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it's so gorgeous and very easy to do, yet gives you that very high-end look. Let me know what you think of project number one. Now on to project number two, which is another very easy DIY. Using these gorgeous frosted um, glass candle holders from Dollar Tree that have the gold rim at the top. I just measured the widest part, which was the top of the rim, and I'm using some beautiful um, ribbon mesh from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to cut that down to the width at the top of the rim, and then I can measure the length of my vase and cut that down. Once I have that cut to size and I did go over and wrap it around to make sure everything was going to fit, I'm going to cover the entire outside part of this glass using some matte Mod Podge. Then I can carefully place this ribbon mesh on top of there and it has a beautiful sparkling glow to the gold leaves. I'm going to wrap that around and smooth it out as I go until I get to the very end. And then I will go back over that end to make sure it has a nice good seal. And then I can go over the entire outside of this piece with a nice even coat of Mod Podge. And I will do the exact same thing to the other candle holder. Then you'll allow your Mod Podge to completely dry. And if you have any excess at the bottom, you can go in with a pair of scissors and trim that off until everything's nice and even. And then I just placed some battery operated LED votive candles in there. And what an easy yet beautiful DIY for the fall. I love the orange color on this ribbon. It turned out very beautiful. You guys, today's video is part of a Harvest Market collab, which is hosted by Lenny with Crafty Lenny 
and Nadia with DIY with Nadia. There are some amazingly talented ladies in this collab. I'm going to have a link to the playlist in my description box below. I hope when you're finished with my video, you will go over and check out all the beautiful fall creations everyone has made today. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and get started on project number three. Starting off with this plastic bucket from Dollar Tree, I'm going to take my Krylon Fusion in matte glacier gray spray paint, and I'm going to take that outside and give that two solid coats, and I just put a thin coat on, wait about 10 minutes, and give the second coat. Painted the entire bucket, including those handles. Now, I wanted mine to have more of a galvanized look, so I'm using a dry, soft brush and Waverly White chalk paint, and I'm just going to pounce that all over this entire bucket. And I don't want to completely cover it, so I do want that gray to show through, but this is just the first process of trying to get more of that galvanized look. Now, once that dries, and don't forget to do the bottom because I wanted my entire piece to be complete, but I didn't do the inside because I am going to fill that up. I'm going to take some black chalkboard craft paint. Now, I get my craft paint from Dollar General, but you can use any black paint that you like. And I'm using a different brush, so you want to make sure you have a clean, dry brush. And again, I am pouncing that up and down, just making it kind of spotty, all the way around this entire bucket. Now I wanna give it a nice rust look, so I am using Apple Barrels acrylic paint in the color Burnt Umber, and I went around the top rim as well as the bottom rim to give it more of that rustic look, and make sure that you get um, like right underneath where the handles are on the rim. And then I'll go in and add a few little spots here and there just to kind of give it like um, some rust in certain spots. Then of course you want to let that dry. And then I went to my Cricut and created um, Farm Fresh Pumpkins. Now I always, when I create something, try to have a free printable. So this will be a free printable on my website, which is listed in my description box. You can go over to my website and download that and print it off on regular printer paper, and then you can trace that if you like, or you can use stickers from Dollar Tree, or if you have a Cricut yourself, you could create this on your Cricut. So I'm just gonna place that on the front, and I think this is so gorgeous. I absolutely love how this bucket turned out, and now it is time to decorate it. So I'm just going to take two of Dollar Tree Styrofoam Carvable Pumpkins, remove the stems and give those, I think it took three coats to be able to cover up all of that orange because it's so bright. So once those are completely dry, instead of replacing those Dollar Tree stems, I'm gonna use some of these wood stems. Now I had some left over last year from Dollar Tree. I haven't seen them yet this year. Um, hopefully they'll get those in. If not, you could just use a branch from your yard. I hot glue those down at the top, and then I'm gonna use just a leaf for each pumpkin off of this pumpkin filler pick from Dollar Tree. And once I cut those bulky ends off, I'm gonna hot glue those down right next to the stem. And now you have a very elegant, beautiful white pumpkin to go in the basket. And I'm just gonna place the Dollar Tree styrofoam block in there. I'm not even gonna take the plastic off. I'm using two of these cotton stems from Dollar Tree, as well as some of these, um, like a branch bundle with some dried type flowers in there. I didn't wanna cut my cotton stems down, so I just bent those over so that they would fit on each side of the bucket behind that styrofoam. The styrofoam is more or less um, to be able to raise our pumpkins up so you'll be able to see those and they'll stand out really pretty. And then I just cut the string that was holding those bundles together and placed those branches and those dried flowers in the back, covered all of the styrofoam up with some Spanish moss, and then placed my pumpkins right on top of that styrofoam. And now you have a gorgeous fall basket. And I think this turned out simply gorgeous. You guys let me know what you think of project number three. I just think this could go with so many things 
for your file decor. So for project number four, we are going to make this cute pumpkin raccoon. I found this on Grandin Road online and they wanted $79.50. Now granted, it is a wood um, carved pumpkin and it is gorgeous, but it gave me the inspiration for this piece. So I am using one of Dollar Tree's pumpkins that was just the plain pumpkin there. And then another one of Dollar Tree's that has the flowers on the top. So I'm going to remove the stem from the smaller pumpkin. And you want to keep that so you can reuse it. And then remove the flowers from the other pumpkin. I am going to also be using a baby bottle brush from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut the end of that off. Now that did take a little bit of effort because it was pretty thick. But it's also very soft. So you want to kind of separate all of those pieces on the brush. And the end that I'm going to be using for the tail, I'm going to bend that around to a curve so that I'll be able to put that in that bottom pumpkin. Now I'm going to take these pieces outside and use my Krylon Fusion in the color Glacier Gray, the matte Glacier Gray. And I'm going to give all three pieces one good solid coat. And then once the bottle brush has dried, I'm going to take some matte black and I'm only going to paint each end. So I'm just going to spray paint the end and when that dries I'll flip it over and get the other side. But you want to keep the center part of it gray. Now everything has dried I do go back in and spread those bristles out on that brush and that is just so cute. I love how that turned out. Now the bottom pumpkin um, and the top pumpkin are completely covered with the gray paint. And now I'm just going to take a pencil and draw out the face. So I started off with the mouth and then I'll draw out the nose and then the area around the nose and the mouth just to create um, the face for the raccoon and then go in and draw the eyes and then those little peaks. So I'm just creating some outlines of the face so I will know where to paint and where to put my coloring on there. Once I have all of that lined up for the face, I can then take the body, and I did make sure that I set the top pumpkin down to make sure that those ribs line up really well with the bottom part so I would know exactly where to draw the lines on there. So now that I have the cute face drawn, I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up so you'll be able to see that. And you don't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get the outline so you'll know exactly where you need to paint everything. And also draw those ears in. And I just think this is super cute. You know, and if you aren't very good at drawing, you could possibly print something out and trace it on there. Um, for the body, I am just going to draw like three different lines so that I will know exactly where to put my markings. And as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of looking because I had it pulled up on my phone sitting beside me. So I was kind of just looking at that image and just taking that image and drawing the outline. <clears throat> so now I have all my outlines together. I'm going to use Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to start off by painting the ears. Um, on the peaks and then I'll go in and shade in around the outline that we just drew on the outside part of the face. And once I have that outline shaded in just on those outside lines, I will go in and paint the eyes. Now I did make sure that I left a little dot at the top of the eye as well as the underneath part because we're going to go back in with a sharpie and fill all the other parts in. Now mine's not going to look exactly like Grand and Rhodes but pretty similar. I mean the colors aren't going to be exact. Then I can go in and paint the body and I am actually just going to paint in between the three lines that I just drew and leaving those lines because we're going to come in and shade it up just a little bit with a different color gray. I'm going to take some acrylic paint in the color Country Gray, made by Apple Barrel, and I'm going to mix that with some of the white chalk paint. I just wanted a different shade of gray than what we already had as the base on the pumpkins. And mix that really well, and then you can go in and paint on the outside of the white part that we just painted. So it's just going to be, it's going to go from white to a different shade of gray to the base of the gray on the pumpkin. Just going to give it a little bit of dimension so it's not just a stark white on the face. 
So once I have that filled in, I can take um, that same gray and go around the cheeks, up to the nose, and underneath the nose. And then I can take that and go on the inside line with that same gray just to kind of shape things up and to blend things in. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side of his face. And I'll show you a close up in just a minute. I think it's really shaping up and looking super cute. And you don't have to worry about painting your pencil marks because we are going to go in with a Sharpie and um, draw on that to kind of give it more dimension. Now for the body, I'm going to go on the outside again of the white paint. And then I will fill in right there where those gray edging is at the top, just on the outside part of the body. Now once the paint has dried, I'm going to take a fine tip Sharpie marker and I'm going to start off with the ears and all I'm doing is making just <clears throat> tiny little marks up and down just to make it look like hair and go around the ears and then right there at the top where the fur would be on the raccoon's ears and I'll do the exact same thing on the other ear. Then I can go in and draw the outline of the eye and then the outline of the white parts at the bottom, and then the little tiny dot of white that we put at the top, and then I can fill in the rest with that Sharpie marker. And it's just gonna look like it comes to life as you fill that in, and so cute. I just love how the eyes look on this little raccoon. Then I would just draw again around the nose, shape that up and fill it in, and then once that's filled in, I can go in and draw the mouth. Then I can take the marker and go around the hair lines at the bottom. Again, I'm just making tiny little marks up and down to kind of draw the hairline around the face and to shape everything up. And I'm just going based off of the picture on my phone. And then once I have the outside line done, I can go in and add right above where the nose is and those hairlines at the top going to the top of his head. And then I can go back in and add the line that goes around the eyes and then up to the nose. So basically you're just going around the lines that we've already painted. And just look how cute he is, you guys. I think he's absolutely adorable. Now for the body, I'm going to draw those same lines right there where the base colored gray is on the body between the whites. And then again, um, some on that outside edge. Once I have that filled in, I am going to take the marker and just make sporadic lines all around the base of the pumpkin. And this just is going off of the inspiration piece because it looked like wood. So I kind of just went all around and made just a couple of little lines on the outside. And look, I just think, I just love how this turned out. I just love how his face turned out. So, so cute. Now for the stem, I am going to use some acrylic paint in the color Warm Buff. And I just wanted to give this a couple of coats to tone that down a little bit. And then once that dries, I'm gonna take the antique wax and go down in between those grooves of the stem to really give it some dimension and give it a little bit more character and bring those indentions out. Now it is time to put this cutie together. I'm going to make sure that the head lines up really well with the base. And because, you know, they're styrofoam, I want these to stay together really well. So I'm going to take a barbecue skewer and cut that down so that I can put that in the bottom part of the head so that I can press that down into the top part of the base or the body of this raccoon pumpkin. And once I know everything's going to line up and that my skewer is long enough, I can use some hot glue to make sure that those stay in there. And this is just going to give it some security and keep it together so that it doesn't come apart. 
And then I did go back in and add a little bit more glue underneath the head. Um, I think I did not get that on camera, but just put a couple of dots of glue under the head to make sure it seals up really well. And then you can reinsert your stem at the top and then take the bottle brush and kind of bend it around in a curve so that it kind of curves around the body. And once I knew exactly where I wanted to place that, I do put some hot glue back there so that I can glue this bottle brush into the back and make sure that it stays and doesn't come out. And now our cute raccoon pumpkin is finished. And this is so, so adorable. Again, this inspiration came from Grandin Road online and they have, I think, a fox and an owl but I just fell in love with this raccoon. I love how it turned out, and I hope you guys like it too. If you have a favorite out of today's projects, please let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know which one is your favorite. And also, please don't forget to go check out the playlist, which is in my description box. There are going to be so many wonderful projects and so much fall inspiration. You guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I truly do appreciate you. Please take care and I'll see you guys next time.